Uh, we, are, we appreciate the, the doings of the Lord in this church. And more than that, the body of Christ all over. Because at our level, we have a mind of the church, the church that Christ is preparing. And the, Christ, the church that is living now, the life of Christ, and the church that will be perfected as we serve God, and ultimately at the end, Christ will take us home. May the Lord bless you. Uh, we am Bishop Peter Gatimo, Apostolic Faith Church, Bahati. Thank you for subscribing to our Facebook and our YouTube. God bless you so much. We now embark on the power in man, part three. Now, last time we agreed that the introduction of man on earth, as it is openly stated in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, 27, 28, God says, let us make a man in our image and after our likeness that he may have dominion in the air, on earth, and under the sea, or in the sea. It was a dissolution in heaven. When we go to verse 27, Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, the Lord says, now he created them, male and female, he created them. When you go to verse 28, it says, he blessed them. The first part, let us make a dissolution. The second part, he implemented the dissolution. He made them, when it was being implemented, it was done in this manner, male and female. And when you go to Genesis chapter 1 verse 28, God blesses people in a poor way. He blessed them. Them. It was a couple. And therefore we cannot, uh, we, we, we cannot share or talk about power in a man if that original idea is not involved. It is there. And therefore, we need to understand this way. That family is an extension of heavenly government. Where God says, let us make people in our image. God is extending his government on earth in that level. I know in heaven they don't reproduce. But God extended his government on earth in that status that we see in Genesis. And therefore, we need to believe this way. That man, what constitutes a man is unity. God operates in unity. The selfishness in a man is not original. The teaching that is prevailing now, be yourself, be yourself, be yourself, self-esteem, self-me, 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 is okay if it is applied well. But it's not being applied well. And that's why we have a problem in marriages. Because you marry a lady, but she wants to be herself. You marry, you get married to a man, that that man wants to be himself. How can marriage be executed? How can marriage be fruitful? How can marriage be practiced and actualized if the husband remains himself and the wife remains herself? Then it's an issue. You tell the wife, keep your money. The husband, keep your money. Now, how do we produce a family? If then we keep keep your money, keep your money, then we can say, we don't have to, 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 to have sex. Keep your seat, keep your seat. Not produce children. If children are product of union, then marriage, that union that brings about children should be practiced in all areas of life. Let no man deceive us. And therefore, we want to agree that man originally was made to take dominion in the air, take dominion on earth, take dominion in the sea, and was made in all those spheres. Multiply, 
subdue the earth, take dominion, and all these blessings were imparted on the couple. God blesses a union. God exists in unity. And God blesses unity. So, power of a man is based on unity. And Christ, when was praying for us in John chapter 17, said, Lord, make them one. Make them one. Let them be so much united that the world you know they are my disciples. You know why? In that union, we form ecclesia, the church, which means a separating together, fellowshipping together in such a manner that a church can have services, gifting, career that are blended together to make church so glorious, so blessed. It is in the environment of the church where Christ can raise millionaires for his glory, billionaires for his glory, families for his glory, nurture children for his glory to a level whereby neighbors, when they see us, they will see a unique identity of Christ who called us. Uh-huh. Secondly, when God made man and woman, he placed them in a garden. One of the things we need to believe God, we, don't, we, 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 we cannot, let us believe God in the right way. We know cars came later, but because of Jesus Christ, we can, we can go back to original and believe God in original way and say this. If God, when people are obedient or are obedient, placed man and woman in a garden, he can also this day place a man in a certain lifestyle or way of living whereby God will be satisfied that you are Eating well, living in peace, and enjoying the right environment. And therefore, another aspect of man is trusting God, friends, to place you in your garden. It might not be, it's not like the Garden of Eden, but in a certain way, the way God loves you, the way God works with you, you find yourself settled. Just like Isaac, when he landed finally in Lehoboth and said, Finally, we have our own place where we can settle and increase. I say in the name of Jesus, man who truly loves God. One thing that constitutes power in man is when God leads you to a place where you can say, Now I can settle and expand. Brothers and sisters, we must emphasize on this. It doesn't matter where today you are living in a hole. I know God is God of deliverance. In Psalms chapter 50, God says, He delivered me from a, a slippery hole. Raised me. Made me to stand on the rock. And put a new song in my mouth. And caused me to live in a way. That whoever sees me will fear him. I said to you, we cannot compromise. Even if you are living in a cave, let God raise you there. We don't have to come and leave you in the cave. As you will come out of the cave and join us as we prosper in the kingdom. The Lord is powerful. Because some people who are suffering, we would like us to join them, suffer with them always. It's okay. Even when we are, we, we are handling the people who are mentally and physically challenged, we put them in a place where they can eat, dress well, give them wheelchairs. You see, life should be a process whereby you put somebody in his garden. In his garden. Sometimes you move loud, correcting those people who are mentally challenged, physically challenged, and we put them in a place whereby they eat well. We can't just leave them to suffer. And that's why we are saying, God 
We want to put every person in a garden, a place where you live. You live. And therefore we are saying, God placed the first couple in a garden, an environment to live and to raise family. God bless us with our own garden. God bless the original family in a place to live. And therefore, in the name of the Lord, God, I think, is still of that might of putting people in a good place. You may be undergoing a process, but let's trust God. Ultimately, you end up in your rehabilitation, just as it is mentioned in Genesis 26. Yes, Isaac had to undergo a process. Those days, there was famine, but God put him in his process until he landed in a place whereby he said, now I'm settled. I want to put you, every man who is watching, I, can I say this to you? I want to put you in a, what I'll call a, a, a move of social mobility, whereby Stop getting satisfied in that rental house, in that dependent situation. May God raise you and place you in your garden. I say God placed you in a garden. God wants to put any man in a place whereby you say, I'm not settled. I'm not settled. I'm not under threat. This house is mine. This vehicle is mine. This family is mine. Brothers and sisters, I know there's what we call in life byproduct, byproduct. People who mess. People who accept defeat. People who take the wrong route. Yes, we had them in the Bible. We had them in the Bible. We had them in the Bible. When God says this, they rebel. We always have that byproduct or maybe opposite, contrary product, whereby as God spoke to us, somebody chose to disobey. As God directed our path, somebody chose to move otherwise, to rebel. And that sometimes brings problem, but God will help us by his grace. Another thing that we want to speak about man is the condition that God put you in. For you to satisfy the heart of God. If you go to Genesis chapter 2, you find God after putting man in the garden. He comes now with the condition of living. Whereby God will not just allow you to live, live, live the way you just feel like. Uh, you need to be very careful with the Satanism. Whereby there is a lot of self-worship. Be yourself. Do what you want. Eat and drink what you feel like. Now we can't do that. In the kingdom, we have our master Jehovah. And we can't claim to be Christians under God. And you want to misuse grace. Whereby in the New Testament, you want to say what matters most is the heart. God never focuses on your behavior. No way. You can't be fornicating and you tell me it is your body which is fornicating, your heart is not involved. You know, there's that, what we, I think they used to call it in Colossians, we have that problem, the church of Colossae, Christian dualism. Eh? Christian dualism, where they say body is matter. The soul is okay. You slap somebody, you say, it's the body that has slapped you. My soul is okay. Uh -huh. You deny me my rights. You say, oh, no, no problem. It's the body denying you, but the heart is okay. We can't practice Christian or maybe that form of dualism. Dualism. Uh, we can't allow that. We want to say, God put the whole man in the garden, but gave his own way of living. Number one. Let's see what God did. Uh-huh. That is, if you go to chapter 2, verse 8. And the Lord God planted the garden eastward. Uh-huh. 
And, and there's all these details of this garden. And go to the details, go to the details. And then finally, you go to the last part where God gives the command. If you go to verse 15, it says, And the Lord God took man and put him in the garden of Eden. Ah, yeah. Let's see. Did God just put man in the garden and leave him there? God gave his conditions. Number one, he said, Ted it and keep it. The first condition, Ted the garden and keep it. There are two things a man should do. Tending is actually tilling, working on it. Keeping is maintenance. Two key words that constitute work in the garden. One side, till it. The other side, keep it. One side, work. The other side, maintain. Work. But don't just work. Make sure what you have is maintained. It lives long. And one of the things that man should understand, there's a condition that God gives you. You must work. Work is not a product of curse. Work is a blessing. Where God says, I put in the garden. The first thing, keep it and till it. The second aspect is, is freedom. The freedom that God gave here, if we check the scriptures, the freedom, that is verse, uh-huh, freedom, verse 15. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden, you may eat freely or you may freely eat but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you should not eat for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die there are two things God gave them freedom to eat of the trees of the garden but the same time, God gave them restriction. You can't have freedom. You are so free, so free, even in normal life. Let's say you are driving in the road. You can't just be free to drive the way you want. You cause accident. Even the way you eat, even if you don't give law, Go to the restaurant. You can't just eat anything, anything, anything. You vomit, friends. You vomit. You vomit, friends. You can't. Go to the restaurant. Go to the supermarket. You buy chocolate. Take a lot of it. Your body will react. Very soon you have allergy. Eh? You go to KFC. Take a lot of burger, 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 chip, 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 chicken. No. Finally, your body will say, no, you have taken enough. There is a restriction. Even the natural life and creation dictate that we are made with freedom that has restriction. The way you speak, there are people when you get to marriage, you can say whatever you want. Ah, freedom? No, no. You have no freedom to say whatever you want. You have freedom to say whatever can be accommodated. Whatever can give life. Whatever can bless. Uh-huh. You don't have to live like you are alone. You live a life whereby you consider others. If you are a brother and you have several sisters or other brothers, siblings, you can't just live like you are the only son in the house. Even other people, other children belongs to your dad and mom. There is what we call freedom with restriction. It must exist. And therefore, one of the things that you cause man to be powerful is to have a life that identify the area where God gave you freedom to eat 
And the area where God said, if you surely go build here, you will have rebelled. And number two, you will die. Now, another thing is, God, after placing them in the garden, it's as if God is so clear, God gave a warning. There is a possibility of dying if you joke around. There is a possibility of death. Do you know, friends, anybody who lives on earth should have that feeling that there are areas that are dangerous. If I'm not careful, I can die. There are areas that there's no step in. There are areas that I should not step in. You know, some of the girls we have around have no restriction. Have no restriction. You just want freedom to be yourself. Let me tell you, the way the world is made, you can't be so free without boundaries. Whether you like it or not, nature will cause you to know there exist restrictions. There exist restrictions. And therefore, one of the power in a man is freedom. You have it. But you need to know where God says, don't touch. Don't eat this. You need to know where God says, don't go beyond the earth. If you transgress this, if you break this boundary, there is a possibility whereby you will surely die. I, I, I don't know to see a man who does not have that sensitivity. If you drive this way, there's a likelihood you are going to cause a fatal accident. If you live this way, sometimes you detect the direction you are, the marriage is taking, your marriage, you can sense if we continue this way, if we continue this way, eh? Ten years to come, there will be no marriage here. You can sense in your children, if my son continues this way, there's a likelihood, likelihood five years to come. Oh, there will be a great problem here. There is restriction. And number two, there is a warning. I warn you, if you do it, there's a likelihood that you surely die. And therefore, we need to know that God put us in a lifestyle or standard that has his own condition of living. Freedom. But freedom with restriction. Possibility. God did not say you cannot fall. I leave you there. But there's a possibility of falling. Even preachers. Preach. Perform miracles. But there's a possibility of falling. There's a possibility of falling. God, you always give you some warning. Thank you. And may the Lord bless us. And may the Lord keep us. It's very important to know that. Uh, you see in the garden of Eden. You, you, can you imagine after the fall? We see children with a different attitude. Understanding. Things are different. But God, you bless us. Now... Let's go to the fourth stage that we need to understand about what constitutes power in a man. Another thing that constitutes power in a man that we need to analyze very well are the stages of life. The stages of life. I don't have to share some details because I shared with you the last, maybe some lessons before about seasons in life. Today I'm sharing stages of life. I hope you remember the seasons. Eh? What we said. From 0 years to 14 years. That child that is growing. Should develop self-concept. And that child who is growing. Should by the grace of God. Appreciate work. Be inspired by people who are becoming better. And we said from 14 years to 25 years. That teenager, that youth should now develop what we call occupation. Occupation or career should identify, identify 
an occupation, identify an occupation that from 40, 25 years is so clear what God has called you to do in the level of gift and career. And we said for 15, 25 years to allow 45 years, we say you become, you develop what we call occupational competence. If you are a preacher, preach powerfully, maximum. If you're in an engineer in that, that age, mm, go powerfully, produce. If you get married, friends, get married, maximum that year, that period. If you are a teacher, oh, build a school and become owner oh, of property, we call it occupational competence. And then for 45 years, you got 55 years out there, we say you need now to establish whatever you have. Start settling. Those are not years of jumping, jumping, jumping. Those are years of arranging whatever you have. Or arranging your life in a way that you are settling. What you have is becoming established. You are actually preparing for retirement in a way that in case you get old, whatever you have can bless your children and even bless other generations after you. When you get to beyond 60, around 60, decline, eh? Decline. Declining means not sitting down, but doing lighter jobs. Eh? Write some books. Manage your property in a lighter way. Lighter way. Whereby your mind is working. Your mind is working. Those are seasons. Let's now come to the stages. Now, let's use the Bible. I, I, I like to use Genesis chapter 4 because that's where the family start manifesting. The family set up. The growth of the family. The Bible says that's where the family is being practiced. And the, Genesis chapter 4 gives the real practice of the production or setting of the family. The Bible says Adam knew Eve or Adam had sex with his wife. That's so clear in the Bible. You know, the, the living Bible says Adam had sexual intercourse with the wife. That's clear in marriage. And she conceived and brought Cain. And said, God, and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. Then she gave birth this time to his brother Abel. And now, there's what we call in life the stage of birth. Now, stage of birth whereby your mother gives birth to you and you get a birth certificate. Or maybe somehow in some countries you can even acquire a, a a credential, eh? I did it a card. That is enough for birth. You know, at birth, there are people, even at the age of 20 years, 25 years, what you have and what you have retained is only birth experience. The only thing you have is the birth certificate. You've just lived. You eat, sit, walk, come back, but you are nothing beyond birth. Do you know, for me to invite you in my birthday party or my fundraising to ask something, what will bless me in that occasion is not that you are born and you exist around and you have a passport. What I need from you is money. And money is a product not of birth but career. And that's why we insist. Men who loiter aloud, hang aloud, are wasting time. I always tell people, if you sit down here, you will not stop life to proceed. You still get old. Even if you sleep in your bed for two years, you still grow old. And number two, you will not stop Development. You still rise up to see other people are building better houses. And the world is developing. 
You still grow old. But what matters most is the value you add to life. You may live years. It's okay to tell us you lived many years. But if you check Genesis 24 verse 1, it has two things. It says, and Abraham, Abraham was advanced in age. That is age. And then it says, and he was blessed with everything. That is, many years with the value. It's okay to thank God that you have spent a whole year and you are closing over to the other year. But the best thing that will help us is the value you added to that year. Can you show us, because you are lived in 2020, what value did you add to this year? Oh, we can even ask you, because you are progressing, are you changing your value system? Because anytime you find yourself getting a new year, a new moment, sometimes it's good to change your value system. Eh? I always tell people, for you to change your value system, you need to, uh, to change also your spiritual level, change your mental level, change your attitude, eh? learn a lot, quicken, get uh, more exposure in the right things. Eh, financial institutions, you need to know what that bank is offering. Go there, see the manager, speak, speak, speak. You need to know because that brother has put up a new building. Eh, what entails that? Yes, for you to change your value system, you need the right exposure. You need to learn. You can't have a new value system if the mind has not been exposed by learning and also you entangle with the people who are prosperous and who are faithful. That's very important. And therefore, the first part is give, you are born. The second part of life that constitutes a part of man is what you became. If you read your Bible, the Bible says, and Abel was a keeper of sheep. That's what he became. And maybe if you could visit his office, you find a certificate of incorporation. Well, maybe you could find a certificate of able sheep or maybe able sheep corporation, whatever. There's something that they adding value. And maybe you could find uh, able very busy with the customers, business people, people from corporates who want to buy a sheep. Ah, that lifestyle is good. I would like you to rise up and become. Don't just be born. Don't just have a birth certificate. Be calm. And Abel became a keeper of sheep. And I pray that God will raise you that way. And Cain was a tiller of ground. That is a farmer. Be calm. In this life, what make people respect you? It's not because you demand respect. It's because you have become somebody. Yes. In the church, when God raises you, you see some of the young people approaching and say, Brother, I have a fight raising. I want, to, I want to plan my wedding. Can you be a member of the committee? It's because they see what you became. You can do something. Somebody approaches you. Can I hire you a car? It's because you have it. You know, social life is not very sympathetic. Social life may not have a lot of sympathy. In the church, we show love. We help the poor. But I said the other day, I can't help you beyond two years. You are poor this year. Next year, join me as I help the, the new poor people. The only people that we give right for all life consistent assistance are the disabled. But if you have two legs, right might, you are healthy. 
I will help you under this year. Next year, no way. You must join me as we help others. Because we also used to lack. But we obeyed God and we became. You must become. You people who are widows. Widows, the concept of widows in the church and orphans should change. From the, the days of Paul to now. A widow should work. Work. Depend on God. Tithe, faith, pray, and get rich. Otherwise, sometimes the concept that I'm a widow, my husband died. If you keep, 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 keep on that, you have an attitude of dependency throughout. I have widows in the church who are millionaires. We started with them when they, when they had nothing. But an immoral widow, a widow is for the kidding. We always be poor. Because the Bible says he is the husband to the widows. And of course, when you fornicate, your husband will divorce you. Jehovah will divorce you, friends. And remain poor. And therefore, career level. Career level is when you become. You become. You become. Become. Youth. Don't move around just because you're energetic. Whatever muscles you have, that's, that's not an issue. Keep them. What you become is a product of might, hard work, and integrity. You have to become. And don't keep long. Because if you sit back, years are passing by. Opportunities, chances for your strength and career are running out, friends. And therefore we are saying, by God's grace, you need to get to career level. That is the second stage of a man. The third stage of a man is how you respond to God with your gift and career. And that's why, in, as I finish, in Genesis chapter 4, you find, the Bible says, in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. That's a stage of, now because Cain is a farmer, can you respond to God? Honor God with your career. Abel, you are keeper of sheep. Yes, respond to God with your career. And that's what is like you register your career in the altar. I pray that God will cause you to have your business experience some link with a right prophet, right altar. Because when you read the Bible, the Bible says, Abel brought fruit offering. Uh, no, no. Cain brought fruit offering. Abel brought something that is unique. You know, I always say, the offering that Abel brought has a specification. It says, he brought the first fruit of the firstborn of his flock and their fat. That's powerful. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering. But he did not respect Cain and his offering. Now, look at the issue now. There's developing some difference. They all had equal chance but one person and I think because one person was respected, his offering was respected. Another one was rejected, and his offering was rejected. And the outcome was different. Outcome was different. And therefore, the third stage of a man in life is the way your family and the way your career, you responded to God with your career. The way you responded Put it to God with your career. And that one guarantee whether your career is long lasting or not. And then the fourth step, stage is blessing or curse. When you responded to God in his altar, did you honor God or you just joked around with God? When you appeared in the altar, were you respected? And you are often inspected or rejected. Out of the altar. 
will produce blessed people or cursed people. And the fifth stage of life is real life product. Add product of career and working with God. And that's why you see Genesis chapter 24 verse 2, God blessed Abraham in all things. Real life product. It also appears after God called Abraham. Genesis chapter 13 verse 2. It says, And God blessed Abraham with silver, gold, and cattle. I pray that as a man undergo the five stages until you produce a family, a lifestyle that is connected with God. Can you hear this, friends? What do you think when God says he respected Abel and he respected his offering? Do you know what that means? You walk out of the altar with a title of a respected man with a respected sacrifice. You must produce respect. You, God, God, you present you with that status. You presented yourself well before the altar. God respected you and your offering. You walk out to live a respected life because God, you follow that impartation. You came before God, you, you give an offering, but you fail to give God an offering the way he expects because God knows himself. You don't make God to be God. God knows himself and God knows his honor and God knows his status. As you give offering, you must honor God the way, you, the way God knows himself so that if God respects you, he will follow you with respect. If you are cursing the altar, the curse will follow you. So make sure you live well. Others, God bless you. We will get to that place today. Next time, we will finalize this teaching about the, the power of a man. I know you are getting blessed. And your mind is getting open now. I always say, in this teaching, we want the deliverance of a man. Through truth and through exposure. To the might of God. Father bless all who are watching. And let this teaching produce men. Men who are respected in the altar. And men whose sacrifice is respected. And they are followed by your favor. Mighty God honor your name on earth through men. In Christ we pray.